Hi guys, Tyler here from HMG. Um, this is basically a uh, response video to Jacob. Uh, he called me out um, in uh, in person, well, uh, in chat to um, basically make a video of uh, my list um, for the upcoming tournaments. Uh, so basically what we are doing, uh, for those who haven't seen Jacob's video, we are putting together um, lists to basically go up against players who are looking to go over and represent uh, Western Australia in the World Open War Tournament over in England. Um, so this isn't a list that is going over, um, but it's essentially me trying a couple different things um, to be as competitive and, yes... As cheesy as possible, um, <laughs> as you'll see with this list. Um, but yeah, so I've been, Jake has been in a very German uh, kind of mood at the moment. Um, I have been all over uh, the US right now and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so yeah, let's go right into it. All right, so here we are. Uh, what we've got here is, um, well, first thing you probably notice is the uh, Stuart light tank. So basically, over here, you know, he's regular, he's got all the upgrades, uh, recce's that help him keep alive, I think it's worth 10 points. Uh, but all up, yeah, I think that's uh, 23 shots from that little boy right there. So, you know, not not too bad, um, especially when you've got two. <laughs> so basically that's the cheese of the list um that's kind of what i'm playing with um this is mostly to kind of see if it's if it's something that i like playing with um and we were told to bring you know absolute cheese to kind of really put those who want to go into the um or who want to go over to uh, england through their paces so yes i've got two uh stuart light tanks so that's 46 shots uh coming out from those two alone um, on top of that, I then also just have a sniper team because, you know, I don't think you could, should ever leave home without a sniper team. Um, a bazooka team to maybe deal with some threats, although I'm not entirely sold on that. So if you have a better idea, more than happy to hear it. Leave it down in the comments or on Facebook or whatever. Um, and then I've got the 114mm rocket launcher. So this is a multi-rocket launcher. Now, uh, this feels like a natural progression for someone who has been playing around with inexperienced mortars. So if you've seen Jacob's video, he takes an inexperienced mortar. And um, uh, yeah, I was I was doing that <laughs> as well. Uh, but this seemed like the kind of logical next step. It doesn't cost that many more points to take it as inexperienced, um, but it's a hev like, you know, heavy mortar equivalent with like the MRL kind of profile of being able to hit way more stuff. You're always hitting on sixes anyway, so it's not too much of an issue. And I wasn't taking a spotter, so inexperienced on a rocket launch, on a um, MRL seemed like a great idea. Uh, so yeah, I, <laughs> I am looking forward to using that. I've never used an MRL before. I've tried a couple other times to fit them in my list, but this is the first time I've done it. Now, uh, another interesting thing here is the Air Force Observer. Uh, so I personally love taking this. Um, uh, I know like there's a whole rookie pilot thing, but uh, this is the one thing I've kind of let myself indulge on. Um, I normally take lists that kind of speak to me uh, very strongly, hence uh, in the past the Pink Panther and like full 10 AR fanatic veteran um, uh Waffen SS squads like you don't need 10 AR ARs like I know that as a player but it's fun as heck to just like chuck them all out like some of them are going to die so you have a blade of wounds but you know I, I like to kind of put things together that uh, aren't entirely uh, you know cheesy he says with two stewards anyway so yeah this is me attempting to kind of like give myself permission to kind of really just you know go for that stinking bishop kind of level it's cheese just mwah, mm, good stuff anyway uh so then on top of that super simple stuff i've got two second lieutenants they're by themselves they're veteran even then i'm thinking about maybe bumping them down to regular um but we'll see next up what we've got here is just Regular infantry squads, um, some of them have eight, some of them have nine, some of them have ten. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason, it was just to kind of add points. Um, so thinking behind this, they all have uh, two BARs, and the thought process uh, behind it is basically what Gorchin has said a thousand times over. 
uh, you can use a wrench as a hammer. Um, the US infantry squads are very versatile. Um, and so having, you know, uh, around 40 infantry um, in four different squads um, with BARs means they can lay down fire with maneuver and move, with maneuver and fire, shoot and scoot, whatever you want to call it. Um, they can oh, fire and maneuver. Uh, they can, uh, you know, really move around the ball while still putting a lot of fire down range, um, which I really like. That's one of the main things that draws me to the US. So I kind of lent into that. Um, side of things that I do like um, because <laughs> I don't normally use light tanks uh, heavy tanks and <laughs> super heavies uh, normally what I use when I'm using tanks although I've used mediums in the past so you know uh, to each their own uh, what else yeah that, so that's the list um, there was one thing I was actually playing around with and I'll just walk you through it. So essentially, um, this was also leaning into what else I like to um, run in the past. Um, and it was a little bit something like this. There it is. So, veteran infantry squad. Take 10 of these boys, right? Then you give them all tough fighters. That is, like I mentioned the 10 ARs before, right? This is that. Um, but kind of a bit more uh, fine-tuned in the sense that these guys don't have um, SMGs or ARs, so they're not getting the double shots, but they are shooting for a longer range because they've got that longer range anyway, um, and they don't take negative one to movement. So, you know, mm, I, swings and roundabouts. Um, even then, you know, you might chuck a BAR or two in. That's 145 up to 150 points for a couple extra shots, and they're moving, and everyone's got tough fighters. Tough fighters are the main point here. All right. So tough fighters is here because this provides such a big threat, um, especially if you can chuck a, like, a, a truck in, which, you know, you can get for, like, 30-odd points or something. Um, that's, like, 180 points, right? So that's 180 points for... A squad and a truck, we say, with the two BARs, mind you, which is a little bit more in the Stuart light tank. Um, and what you can essentially do is you've got two fists then. Well, you know, three, because you've got two Stuarts. But um, essentially, you've got this kind of infantry squad that the enemy has to deal with. You have to deal with this squad of veterans. Um, otherwise, they're going to eat whatever they touch, essentially. Um, you know, they're not Gurkhas, but friggin Gurkhas. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, it, it kind of gives you that one, two, someone has, you have to deal with the infantry and you have to deal with the stewards. It kind of means they, uh, it's a target rich environment, but all the targets are very juicy and it leaves whatever else you have behind. Like I've, I've run this kind of, uh, style list, um, with my Germans where I've got my Panther on one side and yeah, AR toting fanatics on the other and then my other squads are like bare minimum but they get the job done because you've got to deal with these two other threats um and all the while you're getting chipped away with with like um buzzsaw and stuff like that um from machine gun platforms where they're like four or five guys but they've got two mgs each and so they're just laying down fire that's they're punching well above their weight um then you just got a couple guys running around kicking uh taking objectives when they need to be taking taken um, but yeah, so that's my thought process behind it. The only reason I didn't is purely because of that, uh, thought process within the, uh, US, uh, kind of list building within the HMG, I won't say within the greater Perth, um, area or even definitely not the bolt action scene, you know, internationally, but within the HMG show of, um, yeah, the US can, uh, a, a, a wrench is a hammer. <laughs> Um, and I'm saying that wrong, I know I am, so, you know, whatever it is, I can't remember, but, you know, you've got all these, uh, tools that you can use separately. Uh, so, yeah, it's rather generic, um, you know, I like to kind of add a bit more panache to my lists, uh, I'll, you know, I'll take something stupid like, uh, a panther or, you know, the fanatics or, like, uh, last tournament I had two flamethrowers and at one point I had four and realized I was a bit too much but anyway I like to kind of really uh, dive into something a bit stupid and wacky for this it's the Stuarts and yes well it is you know whack it's more whack because it's cheese um so I don't know this is mostly an experiment firstly it's to um, put something up against other players 
um, to simulate what they may come up against in uh, in a larger international setting. And the other is to see if I like a kind of playing around with Stuart tanks because you know they yes everyone like talks about how good they are but it might not be my play style. Um, but we'll see. There'll definitely be a follow up video on this. Uh, yeah, and so that's that's all um, for now. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what your kind of play style is, what you like to do with the US, um, and how you build them, uh, you know, competitively. Let's, let's talk about the competitive side of bolt action, because it is there. And, you know, for every rivet counter, there's a competitive player. Okay, maybe it's more like three to one. But there is competitive players out there, and I think we need to kind of talk about it a bit more, because... <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we all like to play this game and it's it's fun to theory craft and kind of really get into the nitty gritty of it. Yes, don't get me wrong, I love a good narrative day. I've got actually one uh, on the back burner at the moment that's just stupidly whack, right? But I also like to see what I can do and stretch my legs a little bit in regards to competing and, uh, you know, trying to see what can possibly be squeezed out of something. Um especially as I'm moving towards like partisans as my next army, um, I think I kind of need to work out some really solid strategies of different um, pieces because the partisans play like completely different to the US. So that'll be a completely different thing. But for now, I'm really enjoying the US. Um, so yeah, how do you play your US competitively? And with that, I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, do all that fun stuff. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.